All right, welcome back to WMAC Now with your host, Chuck Stevenson, coming at you with a special double fight review. So we're going to Atlanta, Georgia for PFL 6 2022. Both of these fights, of course, are in the women's lightweight division. First up, we have Larissa Pacheco coming in at 16 and 4, taking on Jenna Fabian coming in at 5 and 2. Both ladies looking to clinch a playoff spot with a win here. Okay, so first round. Oh, by the way, uh, Fabian came in with a huge height <coughs> and reach advantage over Pacheco. Didn't didn't matter. Didn't matter. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, first round, Pacheco knocks Fabian off balance with a heavy low kick and immediately follows up with six heavy punches. I mean, this leg low kick, big heavy low kick, chopped at her leg. Knocked off balance, and then boom, six heavy punches, like right away. Nice reaction from Pacheco. Uh, Fabian's hurt. She shoots, desperation takedown, and Pacheco manages to sprawl. Pacheco kind of lets her up, but stays around Fabian's back with the uh, body lock. Uh, then P Pacheco gets a really nice trip straight forward, and uh, she quickly gains mount. Basically, almost right off of the trip. Uh, basically, just all around nice work by Larissa Pacheco here. Uh, Pacheco uh, locks on an arm triangle on the left side of Fabian. And it is pretty tight. I mean, Fabian is doing everything she can to fight off this arm triangle. You know, trying to stretch, her, uh, stretch the left arm out. Basically, pulling at the shoulder with the right arm. Uh... It's tight, but it's not tight enough, and Fabian's not giving up. So uh, eventually, Pacheco gives it up. So she then she postures up and just starts raining down punches. I'm talking like she starts just pouring the punches down. Uh, Fabian, <coughs> excuse me, eats about 22 punches before the referee steps in, uh, giving the win to Larissa Pacheco by TKO at 2 minutes 39 seconds of the first round. Um, so, really nice win there for Larissa Pacheco. I mean, basically a flaw, near flawless victory. You know, if you were to ask me ahead of time, who is the better striker? And I think I said this in a WMA report. I would have said, well, Fabian's the more technical, the cleaner striker. But uh, Pacheco has the more power. And this proved true. Pacheco's power is absolutely game-changing. I mean, never seen Jana Fabian hurt like that from strikes. Pacheco's power is just, it's there. It is, it is there. She lands on someone, and they're going to feel it. Straight up. So Pacheco gets two first-round finishes, giving her six points in PFL's uh, system. She now moves on to face Olena Kolesnik in the round one of the playoffs. And uh, that's a battle of strikers again. And this is another one, like if you were to ask me, well, who's the cleaner striker? I would say Kolesnik, but who, who's going to hit harder? Pacheco. And uh, looking at the stats here, it looks like Kolesnik's going to have the height and reach advantage over Pacheco. So Pacheco, again, coming in with a height and reach disadvantage, I don't think it's going to matter. I think Pacheco is going to have an easy ticket to the playoffs here. So we move on to fight number two of this review. We're going to the main event. Kayla Harrison coming in undefeated at 13-0, the standing champion from last season, taking on Caitlin Young, coming in very short notice, like a week's notice. At She comes in with a record of 12-12. And one, Harrison was supposed to face Julia Budd. Julia Budd had to withdraw, I believe. She tested positive for COVID. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, let's get into the fight itself. So first round, a little bit of fainting back and forth. You know, both fighters testing their range for like the first, say, 30 seconds. Uh, body kick lands for Harrison. And then Harrison closes in for one, two. That gets countered by a, young, by a punch from Young. Uh, but Harrison immediately follows up with a big double leg takedown, gets her to the cage, picks her up, slams Young, immediately gets to side control. 
From there, Harrison tries to work for a crucifix, can't quite get it. Spins to the other side to try to get mount, uh, but Young gets her gets her legs up on the cage and is able to prevent the mount by Harrison uh, by basically trying to cage walk, which is a nice bit of defense there by Caitlin Young. So uh, Harrison, Harrison gets to north south instead, uh, tries to land a couple bunches. Young tries to scramble, but Harrison manages to take her back, gets the hooks in, and from back mount, Harrison just starts pounding and just starts going ham with the punches. Like they're not they're not heavy punches by any means, but Harrison is basically keeping busy with them, making sure they land. Eventually the ref decides he sees enough. He stops it at two minutes thirty-five seconds of round one. Uh Caitlin Young. Uh, what you say? What's the right word I'm looking for? Caitlin Young decides uh protest to the referee about the stoppage, but I got out my golf counter and replayed it. Kayla landed 36 straight punches. Now, one or two of them might have, like, landed on the hand of Caitlin Young, who was trying to block, but basically landed 36 straight punches. So, hard to argue with that. So, your winner, Kayla Harrison by TKO. She moves on to the finals. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of notes on this one. Look, Kayla Harrison did what she came to do. She only got three points in the in the first after her first fight in PFL scoring system. Uh, did not want to risk not uh, not making the playoffs. Got to finish in the first round. Got the six points. Exactly what she needed to do. Now the stoppage might have been premature. I mean, like I said, the punches were not really like hurting. They weren't damaging punches, but it's hard to argue that Caitlin Young was going anywhere at that point, and, and you're absorbing 36 punches. Ref's got to stop it. Um, so Harrison faces Martina Jindrova in the finals. I think, mm, I don't give him, Jindrova's not a bad fighter. I don't give her much of a chance against Kayla Harrison, though, which means we likely see the rematch of Larissa Pacheco versus Kayla Harrison in the finals again. Uh, I think it'll be much more interesting than the first two times they faced each other. Much more interesting. And it's not like, you know, Harrison just walks through Pacheco. I mean, both times they fought, went to decision. Now, granted, Pacheco didn't put up too much of a fight, but it's not often that Kayla Harrison goes to the decision. And she went there twice against Pacheco. And Pacheco now has that power. Where if she lands on Harrison, could be the game changer. I don't know. Anyway, final thing I want to talk about. I keep seeing Kayla Harrison get a lot of hate, especially for this fight. Look, she she fights whoever is put in front of her. That's all there is to it. She goes out there and she dominates. She fights whoever is put in front of her. Is she in an absolutely weak division? Yes. It, women's lightweight isn't even a real division. I mean, after fighters this season were like, Featherweights and bantamweights moving up to fight. But that's not Kayla Harrison's fault, okay? She fights whoever's put in front of her. That's all I really have to say. Like, I, I just think that she gets a lot of undue hate that really should be directed at the PFL. Anyway, those are my thoughts on this. These fights are available on ESPN+. Plus. They are both on the main card. Uh, go check them out if you haven't yet. Come back. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you liked the video, please hit that thumbs up button. Share it as well. Spread the word. And while you're at it, if you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to WMAC Now, the best, most complete women's mixed martial arts dedicated platform on YouTube. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.